What is the use of omega-3 supplementation both before and after a concussion? Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Heisig. We're going to talk about the use of omega-3 fatty acids, fish oil, uh, things like that for both the prevention of metabolic damage and for the treatment of concussion, mild traumatic brain injury. So one thing to know when we're talking about omega-3s, we're largely talking about eicosapentaenoic acid or EPA, and we're talking about docosahexaenoic acid or DHA, so EPA and DHA. If we're going to way oversimplify it, EPA is sort of the more anti-inflammatory one, DHA is the more structural one. They're both structural, they're both anti-inflammatory, that's an oversimplification that EPA might be a little more anti-inflammatory, DHA might be a little more structural. Why do I say that? So when we look in the brain, your brain has a ton of fat and about 10 to 20% of all that fat should be omega-3s. Within that, 97% of those omega-3s should be DHA. And so that's why we kind of say in the brain, it's structural, DHA is structural, because of the 20%, 10 to 20% of fat in your brain that's omega-3s, 97% of that 20% should be DHA, uh, making DHA like 100-fold, 100-fold more abundant than EPA in the brain. When we look at animal studies of concussion, we see that DHA levels decrease after injury. So after a concussion, you see DHA, DHA levels decrease. Animals who are deplete to begin with, so if you concussed a, a mouse that had 70% DHA, um, it actually had more protein breakdown, more cell death, slower motor control recovery, more anxiety and more cognitive deficits than if you concussed a rat that had 97% DHA or adequate DHA. Uh, so the, the mice with adequate DHA had less protein breakdown, less cell death, faster motor control recovery, less anxiety, less cognitive deficits. Um, and so that's awesome. One of the recent studies that came out, a really big study came out saying that, hey, high supplementation of omega-3s, especially in older folks, is associated with AFib, atrial fibrillation. How do we know that you're getting the right dose of omega-3s? How do we make sure that you're not taking too much and you're not making, making sure that you're not taking too little? Uh, one of the really cool um, and growing tests, one of the tests that I use very often, is the omega-3 index. And so what the omega-3 index looks at is it takes your cells, um, and just like in the brain, 10 to 20% should be omega-3s. On your cell, your red blood cell, 8 to 11% should be omega-3s. What do we think most athletes are at? Turns out that most NCAA athletes are at around 4%. Both before and after concussion, we want that omega-3 index 8 to 11% because whether we take it before or whether we take it after concussion, we see very similar benefits in minimizing excitotoxicity, preserving neuronal integrity, so minimizing cell death, uh, preserving neuroplasticity, preserving energy production, stabilizing your genetics and your genes and your DNA and the, the nerve cells and a lot more. So it's really, really a useful thing to have an adequate omega-3 index, um, an adequate intake of uh, cold water, fatty fish, small fish, um, and supplementation when necessary. Uh, if you found this video helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to learn more about concussion and PCS, go ahead and give my account a follow.